Hi, so if you've seen me solder in any of my uh, build videos, you'll have either seen me use this stuff or this stuff. Now this is what's been sat in my toolbox for years. I'm not entirely sure what the gauge on this is. Okay, 0 0.7, possibly slightly larger than that because solder's a bit squishy. This stuff actually works pretty well, but the diameter on it is quite large. I've done a bunch of soldering with this and I bought this on eBay and the seller claimed it was the multi-core brand solder that Dave Jones says is excellent. So I thought I'd give that a try. But of course this came just in a little plastic bag. I've used about half of it because it does seem quite good. But there's no way for me to actually tell if it's the right brand because it didn't come on a reel. And this is going to run out in the not too distant future at the rate I'm getting for it. So I need to find some different solder to buy that is gonna work well. So what I've done is I've bought four different reels of solder from eBay. This seems to be a representation of the, the stuff commonly sold. This I bought a little while ago and I used some of it in the first address register. And there was a couple of things about it which worried me but I've decided to include it in the test because four is better than three. And I also suspect my soldering skill is a, it's improved a lot since then. So maybe that's a, a factor in things. And so it's going to be a more balanced test now. These are sorted into order of what I paid for them. The prices on screen are kind of averaged out for uh, 100 grams. This one was a bit of an anomaly. This was actually sold as the multi-core brand. And that was the picture that was on, on the eBay listing. But when it arrived, it was the Loctite brand. Now, when I've done web searches on the multi-core and the Loctite, they kind of throw up a lot of common links. So I've got a suspicion they might actually be a common origin, but that's what I'm testing. So my main testing, I'm going to use four of these boards, but I'm just going to use some SMD components and some through hole components. And I'm also going to do some pads with flux and some without, because I've kind of had mixed information from people about whether or not I should or shouldn't be using separate flux. So I, I thought I'd give that a go because there might actually be some difference between solders in that regard. One thing I would like to do is take a look at some of this solder under the microscope. So that will give you some kind of an idea of how much bigger the... Uh, 0.7 I suspect this is compared to the 0.5. Put a fresh blade on my knife to try and do this. Okay, so this older stuff I've been using, that looks like it's just the one core. I get more light on this. Now, the multi-core brand that this is supposed to be has five cores. See what we've got. Really wish I could get more light on this. There we go. Okay, well, I am just seeing two cores there.
let's look at the main test subjects. This is the cheapest stuff and that just seems to have the one core. As does that. Interesting, that's a more complicated shape in there. That could be multiple cores that I've just dragged together with my knife edge. Is our five cores. So whoever sold me this I'm pretty sure was lying because that's that's nice and clear cut. So I'm definitely keen to give this a go. See if it's as good as uh, as they say it is. Okay, so I've soldered up all of these. I'm going to take a quick look at them now under the microscope before I clean them. Now in all cases, the upper four sets were done without extra flux and the lower four were done with extra flux. Now in this one, I'm not actually seeing a great deal of difference there. But I am seeing the same phenomena that I saw when I tried to use this particular solder before. It goes in nice and shiny and then as it's setting it suddenly becomes kind of cloudy. Which I've always associated with a bad joint. I did wonder if it was something to do with this being 6337 solder. But this next one is 63. 37 as well. And the joints here are definitely shinier. Still very similar between the fluxed and unfluxed ones. I do remember some of these joints up here where I was reheating one pad to bring the component in were a little bit more difficult on this one. So maybe this one did benefit a little bit from the flux. These pads are nice and shiny though. I'd like to apologise to all the people who are um, offended by resistors not being the same way round when in a row like this. My excuse is I didn't want the microscope to be in the way and my eyes are not good enough to read those numbers without it.
OK, I'm going to clean these up and we'll take another look. OK, I've cleaned these up now. Time for some conclusions. Now, A, if it wasn't for this stuff, this video probably wouldn't exist. It's still got the distinct grey tone to it. It's not the joins aren't shiny at all and it was really me just not being happy with this solder that made me uh, think of doing a bit more research. If I had um, bought either one of these two I probably would have just stuck with it. Now with both of these I did feel a difference in the soldering and I can see a, a difference in the quality of the joins perhaps less with C than with B where I added flux versus where I didn't. So C is probably slightly easier in that regard. But with D, I can't actually see much difference in the joins here, and it didn't feel a lot different when I was soldering it. So maybe with the, uh, the really good solder with the five cores, I don't need to come back in with, uh, with the flux pen. No surprise there really, but the expensive one is the best. Either of these two would be fine, and I don't know if I got a bad reel of this, or if it's actually some have a formula that's mislabeled or something, but yeah, that's rubbish. Okay, well, I'm going to be doing my soldering with this stuff in future. That's a quarter of a kilo roll, 250 grams, so um, that's going to last me a little while and hopefully it will improve the quality of some of my soldering in future or at least set me down the right road. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.